Hey, we've got, <laughs> all right, we're going to get Jennifer in the house. Hello. Hi. Ben. Hi. Um, I have been watching your channel, I guess, for about six months now, about the same time as I met someone on Match.com. Okay. And I'm sorry, this is the first time I've ever caught your show live. Oh, and well, happy I, and I, to hear that. Well, and so I thought, well, maybe I'll jump on here because okay. I keep thinking you have such good advice. And okay. um, I'm By the way, I have to send a text while you're talking. Okay. So just keep, get, I'm listening. Okay. Okay. So I um, have been having such a good time with this gentleman that I met on Match. And we've been dating almost six months now. And we have, he lives about two hours away, but we've managed to see each other most every weekend. We've traveled, we've um, been to family functions together and okay. really having fun. And so okay. here's my question. And when you're speaking now about your emotions and listening to them, um, I think about you a lot because he talks about that he has um, anxious attachment and disorganized attachment. Okay. From, and he's been in therapy for it, but he's not healed. And he talks about not loving himself. And I'm always like, well, you know, I can't fix that. Um, you have to, to do that yourself. Okay. And this weekend he told me that I, he had been waiting for someone like me his whole life that, um, that I was the person he dreamed of meeting, but there's a, but okay. <laughs> then he tells me that, but why does he still feel empty inside? Okay. And so, uh, wait, he said that to you, but why do I feel empty inside? Like, you are the person I've been waiting for and you know, you're the best partner, friend, girlfriend that I've ever had. And I love you, but I feel empty inside. Okay. And so. so okay. So you've been dating for six months you live two hours away you see each other once a week on the weekends correct well we spend out we hang out two or three days and then we've traveled oh. some long okay weeks. okay i just want to get some clarity and i'm mm -hmm. assuming you're physically intimate with each other um six months jonathan <laughs> so i just i want to hear the words yes we the penis went inside the vagina did you have to say it that way? Yeah. I know, but you, this is, hey, by the way, this is the hot seat. You got to accept Jonathan for the way he is. Okay. So, so we're talking about a person who obviously sounds self aware. In other words, he's going to therapy, he's aware of his attachment style, but he says he's empty. Now, do you mind sharing his age real quick? 59. 59. Okay. Um, so my, my instincts tell me that, do you know, what does he do for a living? He's a contractor investor. Contractor investor. How is he doing financially in his life? I mean, I don't ask those questions, you know, okay. we just... what's your guess on how, well, you've been to his home, I'm assuming, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So judging by the car he has in the driveway and his home, what would your guess be on his financial status? Self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. Okay. Okay. So, but not necessarily rolling in the dough. You know, he's got mm -hmm. five homes and a Learjet, that sort of thing. Okay. So I would suspect that he's feeling empty because he possibly lacks purpose. In other words, and, and let's let's peel the onion. So has he been divorced? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does he have children? Yes. How old are his children? Adults. Okay, adults. Okay. Um, so do you does he have a contentious relationship with his ex? It was a bad divorce 13 years ago. Okay, but how about currently? Um amicable relationship, non-existent relationship. They're fine now. 
Okay. Okay. Um, believe me, I went through a, I went through about a decade with my ex-wife, and it's been 19 years now. So we are actually very amicable with one another. In fact, I'm going to see her this weekend when we um, when we um, take our son's ashes and we um, donate them back to the ground, so to speak. Not donate, but um, we're going to do that. But anyways, I'm going off subject here. So my instincts tell me that there's probably a lack of individual purpose going on. He feels empty. In other words, he may not feel satisfied in his professional life. He may feel remorse or regret for past choices in his life. Has, have any, does any of this resonate with you? He tells me he's not crazy about what he's doing. Yeah. And sometimes he feels like he hasn't figured out what he wants to do when he grows up. So yeah. Okay. Well, that's a very common experience for so many men, particularly baby boom men, which he is. He's actually the last of the baby boomers. Um, but that's a very common experience, even for men who are Gen Xers as well. We were so conditioned to, you know, go to college, get a job, meet a girl, get married, buy a house, start a family. I'm not everybody followed that for, to the T, but there was some element of that for those of us who are baby boomers and Gen Xers. Um, so he probably, his, his blueprint of what he thought his life was going to be like collided with his reality some years ago, and he feels an emptiness. Now, if you're not familiar with the six basic human needs, you may want to Google this. Six Someone write it in the chat box, six basic human needs. Um, the need for certainty and safety, the need for variety in our life, the need for connection, the need for significance, the need for growth, and the need to contribute to other human beings. So my guess is that he's not, he's probably not fulfilling much of his, our basic needs in our life. And so you represent probably the best thing in his life. That's a blessing and a curse, okay? To you, that's a blessing and a curse because um, the blessing is that he feels companionship with you. He feels connection. He gets that physical intimacy. I suspect what you're questioning right now is, is he capable of commitment? While you two have committed to seeing each other on a regular basis, I'm a I'm supposing that you're probably wanting to know if there's something more here. Have the two of you said, I love you to each other? Yes. Okay. Who says it first usually? He does. Okay. That's kind of indicative of an anxious attachment style, as you said earlier, but he's also disorganized. I think you said disorganized, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That means, okay, so... Also known as, I mean, also some, I believe, anxious preoccupied, is it? Or no, it's, is there an anxious disorganized? I forget. I, I just, I, I'm, when I say forget, my the terms get mixed up in my head. When you start coming closer to him, it might cause him to pull away, hence the disorganized. So, whereas when you're pulling away, he wants to come and get you kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. so. There's an element that happens. And by the way, I'm guilty of this too because I'm an anxious attacher. So I'm familiar with that. When someone gets close, sometimes that scares me. Building deep roots of trust is the only way he's going to feel safe. In addition, if he can get his needs met outside of your relationship. So does he have any humanitarian aspects to his life? Does he give to charity? Does he do any volunteering? Does he? Does he? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's a good sign. Um, does he? Well, he probably doesn't feel significant. So he probably, that's probably one of the reasons why he feels empty. He doesn't feel a sense of significance. So... What is his therapist? Has he has he shared with you openly what his therapist says to him? Not really. Mm -mm. Okay. I know he's just working on this, and I think he's gotten kind of busy and gotten away from some of that, some of the therapy. So, but he's looking at doing more and actually diving deeper into this attachment because he just learned about this in the last year. Okay. And he's 
Um, he's struggling with it. I'm just wondering, I think my question is, I feel like I need to pull back and say, you need some time to work on you. And I want to get him your book. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, my book is a very simplistic version, but it's really meant to take you through other rabbit holes with the recommended reading list. So here's the thing about growth. You have to want to heal. You have to look your fears straight in the eye and say, I want to heal from this. I want to grow from my pain. The, 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 Fear causes people to run away from relationships, okay? But, and so there's this, well, if you love me, you would, you overcome your fear. Like we have this kind of narrative. If you love me, you would overcome your fear. But, and by the way, to some degree, that's true. I do believe when we are fully committed to another human being, that's incentive to overcome the fears, the challenges, the disconnect. In other words, when you become all in, like, Damn the, it's like, it's like burning the boats, you know, back when court, I think it was Cortez, you know, like we're going to burn the boats. You're stuck here. You can't go, you can't go back. Okay. That's one of the elements of all in now within your relationship, you're saying, Hey, why don't you go work on yourself? Well, if I told you Jennifer it was going to be 10 years of working on himself, how would you feel about that? I think I'm okay. As long as he can get to a point where he feels healthy. I'm wait, 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 wait. So you're going to be okay. If it took him 10 years to get healthy, you're just going to sit in the side. Probably not. No, no. Okay. So <laughs> let's be clear. If it was yeah. five years, are you going to sit on the sidelines? I guess I'm, when I'm saying this, I'm not feeling like it would, I don't know how long this well, could be. Because you have a fantasy. You have a fantasy. Well, I'm just, you go take a week and you take a month or two, work on yourself and you'll come back. That's not how growth happens. It doesn't happen like that. Growth, I mean, it could take decades to go through the dark night of the soul. It could take decades to go through your hero's journey. It could take decades to go through the tunnel as Alison Armstrong talks about it. So be careful of this narrative. Well, you go work on yourself because- Okay, that's why I asked the question because I'm just pondering since he said that and I, it made me sad, okay, when he said it. And I, you know, the only thing I could say was, well, I can't, I can't fix you. You have to do that yourself. And, yeah. and I have been all in. I really yeah. have. I'm like listening to you and I'm just- Okay, I'm going to be vulnerable here. I really like him. Um, I love him. And I want to be there for him, but I just, am I in the way now? I mean, if he feels empty inside, I don't know what he's saying to me. And I don't really, I'm struggling with how to talk to him about it. Okay. So have the two of you discussed long-term relationship? Um. The fact that you're pausing tell gave me the answer. I mean, like, look, you guys are like you're just dating. I guess and it's so. really yes, you, you basically are. Are hook, you hook up once a week, you have a good time, and he goes back to his respective home. So the real question is, is what's his first name, by the way? It's a great one. It's a great one. She disappeared. What is it? Hello? Oh, we lost your volume. Oh, my God. Oh. We lost volume. Hold on a second. Something must have happened on my end. Nope. Folks, can you let me know if you hear me? Oh, Jennifer, we lost you. I'm bummed. I wanted to hear what she was going to say. Well, she tried. Okay. So, uh, God, I'm kind of bummed. Uh, I wanted to hear what she had to say. Okay. So, but you guys can hear me. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, first off, I want to give Margaret some props for thank you for the $14 super sticker. Uh, his name is probably Jonathan. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, so coming back to Jennifer, 
What's my advice to her? I think it's time to have a real significant conversation about where's this relationship going? What are, what's the purpose of this relationship? Do we have long-term, is this a long-term goal or is this still, you know, is this a short-term goal? I think I'd want to know where he's at. The fact that he's led with, I feel empty, he's basically putting his exit clause in the relationship, unfortunately. At the same time, we can recognize that human beings can go through a lot of emotional trauma. The question is, does he have a foundation underneath him, emotionally speaking, to explore a deeper commitment with another human being? And the answer is probably not right now. So if she pulls back, he might. this might create the clarity he needs. I would venture to say, have an open, deep conversation. Express what your desires are, Jennifer, what you want from a significant relationship. Express your desires, what you want, and see if you're on the same page. And if you're not the same page, it's probably time to move on. Recognize that you can be a supportive person in a relationship, but really ask him to be fair to you. Is it fair to me to wait if you're uncertain about your life? Are you being fair to me? Ask him that. This causes him to step into treating you with a level of virtue. And if he's not capable of doing that, then you have to ask him, you have to ask him, is this fair to me? And then have him own it from a sincere place. And if it's if he's incapable, then it's time to move on. I'm sorry, good people aren't necessarily make great partners. And that's something you should consider. Okay, Jennifer, I hope this helped. Um, if I ever, Hey, everyone, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Post a comment below. Uh, let me know if this resonated with you, um, if you have something to add. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, schedule a link to a, a schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. It's in the show notes. Follow me on Instagram. Join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Get all the books I recommend. One of the books I recommended recently was the book called The Language of Emotions by Carla McClare. Everybody check this out. It's at the links below to get a copy of my books that I recommend. All right? All right, folks. Hey, I hope you found value in this video. I hope this conversation, Are Men Even Capable of Commitment, resonated with you. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Um, please let me know what you think. And again, please share this video with friends. And we're going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrog of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank Holly and Brown, Kanita, and Yvonne.